Hi there, welcome back to the English class and we are stepping into unit 6 and what is unit 6? Biodiversity. What does that mean? That means the large variety of life around us. What we generally see, uh, we divide it into major topics like insects, animals, birds, trees, that's it. But do you know that each species of insect has different types within the same species? Same applies to animals, birds, trees. There is so much variety living in such different landforms of the earth that it's like uncountable. And somewhere down the line, we forget that each species of each type of life on earth is very important for human beings to survive. Right now, the world has come to a stage where we feel that a good job, good education, a decent place to live, all these are required to be comfortable and happy in life. We forget the root of life, the diverse life around us. That is what we need to stay alive. So in this unit, we are going to meet a very, very, very important person who has done so much to educate people what is the importance of this diverse life around us and how we need it in order to stay alive. Now look at this picture. It's a painting. It's beautiful, isn't it? such serenity, it's so pristine, so beautiful, clean, colorful. There's a lovely cottage, there's a beautiful lake, it has life in it. There are swans, there are geese, seagulls flying around, you have trees, forest station. It's lovely, it's, it looks alive. But let's have a look what happened when man came along. He didn't do anything purposely. He just built a factory. He chopped down a few trees, took an area of land, built a factory there. Factories are needed because their products are used by us. So what's wrong? But look what we've done to the environment. The factories have affected the lake. All the poisonous discharges of the factory are sent into the lake. It is polluted. Factories emit smoke. It pollutes the air too. Look how the greenery is lost. Have you ever observed a tree on the side of a main road? Does it look lush, bright green? No, it has a very dull and almost dead green. That is what has happened to this forest. Look at the trash that we are generating each time we set up a manufacturing unit. Look at the life that has vanished because of this trash. Which picture looked better, the initial one or this? Definitely we would say the other one was good. Yes, it was beautiful, I agree. But do you agree that this is what we are doing to our nature knowingly or unknowingly? Yes, so let's face this reality and let's discuss what this wonderful lady taught us in order to face the situation. Welcome, Madam Wangari Matai. She started the Green Belt Movement. That means restore, bring back greenery into the world. Where and how, let's see. She also fought for equal rights for women in Africa. She is the first African woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Why was she awarded such an amazing award? Let's see. Madam Wangari Matai, she is from Kenya, Africa. So this is an excerpt of an interview that she is given to a Japanese radio channel, the NHK radio. Today, they are going to ask a couple of questions and we are going to see what Madam has answered. Their first question to her was, how did you become aware of the environment? They asked her, 
what made you take up the Green Belt Movement? She says, from the time we started, she saw people approaching and asking for basic needs like food, water, clear water to drink, building material, energy, that means woodwork for fire to cook food, and fodder for the animals. And she found this shocking. She thought, aren't these the basic things you get from the land that's around you? the place where you're born? How come people are coming and asking for these necessities that nature has already given to us? All of these come from the land. So we knew that what the people were asking had to do with the environment. She thought now it's not going to, it's not going to work out if you help the people. Because in order to help the people, we have to help the environment first. We have to bring back the environment to its original state where there is clear drinking water, enough food, enough building material for all the people. They did not have these things because the environment was degraded. So from the very beginning, she understood that she had to rehabilitate the environment. That is, bring back the environment to its initial glory. So that's when she became aware of the problems of the environment and the solution. The forested mountains around the area in Kenya, they were the source of water and rain. When you deforest, what happens? What do forests do? They attract rain clouds. And once there's rain, the forest trees trap the rain and make it sink into the soil. But when you chop off forests, when you clear forest area, what happens? There are no rain clouds and even if you have rain, the water doesn't seep into the soil. It gushes off and joins a sea or an ocean. And the local people and animal in that area do not get any water or food or a chance of irrigation. When you deforest, you cause a shortage of water and a change of rainfall patterns and therefore people are not able to get food and water. Therefore, in order to give them good environment, what is important here? Government. This is Mr. Obama paying attention to what Madam Wangari has to say. The government is very important because they are the ones who have to protect forest area, protect its interests, and therefore they can take care of the people they are supposed to govern. So this is just for now. We will continue much about her in the next video. Stay tuned.